More than 30,000 species of fish have been discovered. Some of these species evolved in very strange ways. Tripod fish. This deep sea weirdo is one of the few known examples of a stationary suspension feeding fish meaning that like corals, sponges, anemones, and many other sea creatures, it simply stands in place waiting for plankton to drift into its grasp. Three of its fins extend into long, thin poles, allowing it to prop itself up in the muck of the abyssal floor and remain there for days at a time. It moves only when necessary and uses its two front fins to help catch bits of food and sweep them into its mouth. Since they don't need to chase their food, tripod fish are very nearly blind, and since they may not encounter one another very often, they're simultaneous hermaphrodites, meaning any chance encounter between two adults can impregnate them both. Elephant fish. Fish can talk, not just sign language or posturing, but actual communication. Scientists have discovered that piranha, for instance, have at least three distinct barking, grunt-like words that mean, don't mess with me right now, seriously, I might have to bite you, and now I'm seriously ticked off. This is not new or unusual. Fish are actually very vocal and communicate among themselves all the time. But the elephant fish has perhaps one of the most unusual methods to exchange information. Electricity. The elephant fish uses electroreception to sense its environment. It generates an electric charge and uses it like sonar to find its way around. Scientists have also discovered that this rare ability to generate and sense electricity has given the elephant fish a novel form of communication. There are over 200 species of elephant fish, and they all produce a slightly different field. They can all feel each other's currents to distinguish species. They can also determine sex and social status, all with electricity. The males will also serenade females with lower frequency humming. It's a fish that sings an electric song. Cleaner Ras. The Cleaner Ras is the entrepreneur of the coral reefs. The bright blue stripes on its sides advertise its services to other denizens of the seas. What does it sell? Cleaning and hygiene services. Cleaner rasa have territories called cleaning stations, where other bigger fish, even sharks, line up to be cleaned of parasites. The rasa gets a meal and hopefully doesn't become a meal, while the client fish gets all its lice and other pests removed. The cleaner rasa has a harem of up to 16 females that work with him. If one of them gets greedy and bites a client, the male will chase and harass her. Then he'll go apologize to the client by stroking them with his fins. Not only is it an actual fish business, but it's got all the same personnel and client problems of human businesses. Rasa have to deal with bad employees and angry customers. The client fish have lots of choices, and can be picky about who they let clean them. Customers will even watch the teams at work to see who does the best job. It's a tough market out there, especially when your workers want to eat the customer's flesh. Convict fish. Adult convict fish never leave their den. In fact, researchers have studied them for years and are still not exactly sure what they eat, but it's very likely that their thousands of children feed them. At night, the juveniles hang from mucus threads throughout the burrow. Researchers aren't exactly sure why they do this either, though everyone agrees it's creepy. During the day, they leave the burrow in a swarm to gorge on plankton. Painted in black and white stripes, the convict juveniles resemble the poisonous striped catfish. This mimicry helps to keep them safe while they forage. Then. When night falls, they return to the den where scientists believe they must feed the adult convict fish, making this the only instance in nature where the children take care of the adults. The kids have been seen swimming into and then leaving their parents' mouths, but no one knows what they're doing in there. Are they regurgitating, or defecating, or some third thing that is possibly even more repulsive? No one knows. It's part of the mystery and beauty of the ocean. Blind Cave Fish They're blind. They don't have eyes because they live in perpetual darkness. So how do they get around? Why don't they run into walls and rocks or other fish? They have a super sense called hydrodynamic imaging. All fish have an organ called a lateral line down the length of their body, which detects vibrations and the flow of water around them. Some fish use this for schooling or to feel if a predator is rushing up behind them. In cave fish, the sense is super enhanced. They can feel walls, rocks, and obstacles just by swimming around. It's like an extended sense of touch. The change in the field of flow around their bodies lets them build up a map of what is around them. Mummachog. You cannot kill the mummachog. It can live practically anywhere. Is your bay full of deadly carcinogens? The mummachog does not care. Is your harbor full of lethal polychlorinated biphenyls that cause fatal liver damage? The mummachog laughs it off. Even in grimy rivers covered in oil slicks, 
this little fish lives happy and healthy. Most fish avoid filthy oxygen-poor water, but not the mummicog. If it's confronted with a low oxygen environment, it either breathes at the surface or changes its blood to bind more oxygen. Because altering your blood to work harder isn't really difficult, right? Mummicog can survive in freshwater or extreme salt water too. In other experiments, it's been shown that the mummicog can even adjust to living in zero gravity. And it's a very useful fish because it can consume 2,000 mosquito larvae a day. This is a super minnow that can survive not only a wide range of poisons, but also space flight. Mangrove kill a fish. No matter how many abilities fish have, there's still one universal rule. They're stuck in the water. The mangrove killifish has found a way around even this immutable requirement, though. It can live inside of rotting trees and branches on land for months. It's called log packing. This is a fish that lives in trees. When pools dry up or the water recedes, mangrove killifish will jam into old trees, hollow coconuts, discarded coffee cans, or just under the leaf litter. As long as it's kept moist, the killifish can survive like this for 66 days. While other fish, like the lungfish, can survive without water for longer, they have to go into a dormant state, a kind of fish hibernation. Killifish maintain a normal metabolic state so that as soon as the water hits, they jump up and take off. The secret is that their skin acts like an extra set of lungs to take in air and maintain salt levels. They are some of the most amphibious of all the amphibious fish, and they're hermaphrodites. So while they're living in a log waiting for the tide to come back, they can self-fertilize to pass the time. Tonguefish. In 2006, an expedition to explore the shallow chain of underwater volcanoes in the Mariana Arc between Guam and Japan made several amazing discoveries. One of the most interesting finds were the pools of molten sulfur scattered throughout the range. Reaching temperatures of over 180 degrees Celsius and spewing out sulfuric and toxic heavy metals, these vents are not hospitable places, but the tonguefish loves it. These flat, flounder-like fish were observed thriving in this environment in great numbers. So what is causing these weird-looking fish to thrive? Scientists don't know yet. A few fish were seen lying in the pools of sulfur, just floating on the surface of a bubbling cauldron of molten brimstone without a care in the world. That's how the tonguefish do it. What you call hell, they call home. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.